with our next speakers, we wanted to start to focus in a little more on the state of Michigan and, and some of the activities here. So Colleen Matz and Megan Massenmanick are gonna tag team the first presentation. Colleen is the Farm to Institution Specialist at Michigan State University Center for Regional Food Systems. And Megan coordinates the Michigan Local Food Council Network. And they're both gonna discuss the Center for Regional Food Systems work, but especially as it relates to networks of people and organizations around the state doing good work. So Colleen and Megan, come on up. My name is Colleen Matz. I'm the Farm to Institution Specialist at the MSU Center for Regional Food Systems. And some of you may remember us back in the day when we were known as the CS Mott Group for Sustainable Food Systems, but we launched as the MSU Center for Regional Food Systems in 2011. Our mission is to engage the people of Michigan, the United States, and the world in applied research, education, and outreach to develop regionally integrated, sustainable food systems. Our vision is a thriving economy equity and sustainability through food systems rooted in local regions and centered on food that is healthy, green, fair, and affordable. There are about 20 center staff, including staff from the MSU Student Organic Farm, and we are a collection of specialists working on different aspects of the food system. We work to catalyze collaboration and foster innovation among the diverse range of people, processes, and places involved in regional food systems. Whether in Michigan or Malawi, our projects span from farm to fork, including production, processing, distribution, purchasing, access, policy, and more. And you can see some of us here, this is not all of us, but some of us here doing our part to support the Michigan Apple Crunch activity in 2015, which is part of the National Farm to School Month across the country. We also have over 70 MSU faculty and staff from 17 different units across the university that are formally affiliated with the center. Michigan Good Food is one of our key initiatives, and I know a number of you have been involved in that work since the very beginning. The Michigan Good Food Charter provides an introduction to the importance of food systems issues, a vision and a roadmap, and six broad goals with 25 agenda priorities, all looking out to the year 2020. So take a look at michiganfood.org if you would like to learn more. And here is a timeline, kind of a snapshot of the development of the charter and activities since then to support it. So it was originally released in 2010 with a number of work groups convenings of people from all over the state in 2009 to set out that charter with its goals and agenda priorities. We at the center help really provide a platform and some of those spaces for convening around this work, but it really takes all of us working across sectors and across organizations to reach these goals and to make this work happen. So please do mark your calendars. Coming up in 2016, the Michigan Good Food Summit will be in East Lansing on October 28th. So as you'll see, we only convene every other year, and 2016, we're on, so we hope to see you there. Here are the six goals for the Michigan Good Food Charter, and they're all for 2020, as I mentioned, but they reinforce each other. They focus on institutional purchasing of local food, expanding profitable markets for farmers and paying fair wages, generating new agri-food businesses, increasing Michigan residents' access to good food, including for kids at schools, and incorporating food and agriculture into kids' education. So as a farm to institution specialist, I in particular work on the institutional sourcing goal, and that goal is that Michigan institutions will source 20% of their food products from Michigan growers, producers, and processors by the year 2020. Now that goal can reinforce the next goal that Michigan farmers can profitably supply to 20% of all Michigan markets, and that includes Michigan institutions. But I'm just one of many people working on those goals. We at the center are making investments and leading, or co-leading in my case, networks to reinforce these strategies. And Megan, my fellow presenter, didn't know that I'd be quoting her today, but she, she once said that these networks are the social infrastructure 
that can help make change happen. I think that's a really great way of looking at them. We want our networks to be so effective that they have the potential to make any of the good food systems projects happening anywhere in Michigan and led by whomever to be more effective projects. So thinking about how much more can we accomplish together through a network of networks than alone. Together we can increase our capacity and funding for Michigan communities and local and state organizations supporting good food systems, which is just like what the Community Foundation of Southeast Michigan has us here for today. And together we can make and also track measurable progress on Michigan Good Food Charter goals and priorities. We at the center use a collective impact framework, or at least try to use a collective impact framework to accomplish this work. And the network of networks idea can kind of bring this concept to life. There are five conditions for the collective impact framework. Some of you may be familiar with this. There's a common agenda, and that's what the Michigan Good Food Charter provides for us. A shared measurement system or systems, mutually reinforcing activities, constant communication, and a backbone organization. Other preconditions for our work at the center are an understanding of that working definition of good food, meaning that it's healthy, green, fair, and affordable, strong partnerships, including with MSU Extension, with community organizations, and with foundations, and a high-functioning good food charter steering committee as well as the other committees that are working across the networks. So in my case, I'm working on the Michigan Farm to Institution Network, and we have an advisory committee for that group. One effort that demonstrates collective impact and shared measurement in particular is Cultivate Michigan. Cultivate Michigan is the local food purchasing campaign of the Michigan Farm to Institution Network. And as I mentioned, I co-lead that with the Ecology Center. Nikki will be speaking a little later on today, and she's been engaged in this work as well. And MSU Extension supports this work. It helps farm to institution programs grow and track their progress to reach that 20% by 2020 goal set out in the charter. And by institutions, we're talking about early childhood programs, K through 12 schools, colleges and universities, hospitals, and senior living facilities or senior centers. We launched as a network in April of 2014, so we're coming up right on our two year anniversary, and we launched with Cultivate Michigan at that time. So you'll see here a snapshot of some of our progress to date. We definitely want to see more institutions joining in on Cultivate Michigan, but this is institutions that are not just purchasing local food, but tracking their local food purchases. And soon enough, we will have one big number that will represent the dollar amount of the institution's contribution to the Michigan economy. So that's the kind of collective impact that we're really talking about. I'm going to close out my remarks today with a couple of stories and I wanted to talk about farm to institution connections and it was kind of hard to narrow it down to just a few in my few minutes because I've been working on this for years now and there are so many wonderful connections in the room today represented and across the state so it was hard to kind of narrow it down to a few. So I'm going to focus on some emerging connections and relationships. We have so many long-standing relationships and great work that still inspires me today, but this can maybe seed some ideas for ways to jump in if there are folks that are considering this. The first story I wanna tell is a short one, but it's about a farm to institution program in its beginning stages. And it shows that mutually reinforcing activities can really help bring broader engagement. So every year through the Michigan Farm to Institution Network, we host a series of field trips or education days as we're calling them that promote some of the featured foods, seasonal featured Michigan available foods that we promote as a network. And it's also intended to provide a way for institutional buyers and others supporting them to learn more about their food system in their local area and to maybe connect with a local vendor or supplier. So in 2014, we offered a field trip to an apple orchard. We were featuring apples as part of our seasonal featured foods at that time. And we visited an orchard in the Thumb area, which was organized by partners at MSU Extension. One attendee of that field trip, who hadn't yet really been on our radar yet, was Brian Rosso of American House Senior Living. American House Senior Living 
operates in Florida, Illinois, and Michigan, and it has a corporate office here in Southeast Michigan. And little did Brian know when he showed up that day that we would ask him to be um, interviewed for our Cultivate Michigan video, and he is now on that YouTube video if you wanna check it out. So beware if you show up to any of our field trips, we bring you right in to that work. But in that video, Brian mentioned, in the past we had always just relied on what showed up from our distributor. Now we realize the importance of sourcing from local farmers and using the freshest products available because we're getting a lot of requests from our residents at American House. They want it, they're demanding it, and we definitely want to deliver it to them. We want to deliver what our customers want. So it turns out that Brian is the culinary director for the American House senior living sites in Michigan, which are upwards over 35 sites. So if you can think about the opportunity that comes along with that, if Brian is shifting and willing to shift his purchasing to Michigan products, more Michigan vendors can have an opportunity to supply to this new market. Institutional markets may not be huge money makers, but they can be good, stable, steady markets for farmers to diversify their portfolio and manage risk. So this year, Brian joined us as a Michigan Farm to Institution Network Advisory Committee member, which helps us learn from him and his experience to better understand and engage more broadly in this senior arena, which is kind of new for us. And it hopefully will help him connect to more sources of good Michigan food. So we'll be interested to share with you how he progresses along this pathway. The next story is kind of about the power of networks when they work together. We at the Center for Regional Food Systems, with some funding we've had from the Kellogg Foundation, have offered a My Farm to School grant program since 2011. We provide mini grants to K through 12 schools and early childhood programs, serving the youngest of children and serving the most vulnerable. Over the years, we've provided a number of grants right here in Southeast Michigan, including to Detroit Achievement Academy, the Bog School, Detroit Public Schools, Waterford Public Schools, they're here today, and to South Redford School District. We've also provided grants to early childhood programs, including the Corey School of Learning, Oakland Family Services, Rainbow Academy II Preschool, Wayne Metro Community Action Head Start, and Hamtramck Head Start. Right now we have one grantee that's very close by to where we are today, A&W Daycare, and he has also worked with Keep Growing Detroit to develop an on-site garden to complement and reinforce and enhance the local food that's coming into his food program. It was through promoting this grant program and kind of sharing stories about it and lessons learned at some conferences that I met Xavier Jeremillo. Xavier is the chef and the pro food program director at a juvenile residential center here in Southeast Michigan. He's at Calumet Center in Highland Park. And the program itself may serve a small number of kids each day, but it can also provide up to three meals a day for those residents. Xavier applied to receive a planning grant through our grant program to start learning about more local food sources that he might one day be able to tap into. And thereby, he became part of our farm to school network and our network of grantees across the state. These are food service practitioners who we know are interested in, if not already, purchasing local foods. So it was at a joint network meeting of our Michigan Farm to Institution Network and our Michigan Food Hub Network that we made a great connection to a farmer for Xavier. And hold that thought, I'll kind of come back to that. So another new part of our Michigan Farm to School program is a connection with Hoop Houses for Health. And that program is coordinated by the Michigan Farmers Market Association and the MSU Department of Horticulture in collaboration with our center. Through this program, farmers can receive zero interest, five-year loans to build hoop houses and basically pay back that loan by providing food to their community. The primary and the original way to repay that loan was by distributing vouchers to families, vulnerable families in those areas, and then those families could bring those vouchers and redeem them at the farmer's market where the program operates and where those farmers are selling their products. Now the newest part of this collaboration is that farmers can also repay up to half of their loan through a farm to school or farm to early childhood connection with an eligible program. So 
pretty cool and innovative program, I have to say. And there are so many things that are good about it. It increases good food infrastructure and season extension capacity in our state. It provides farmers, hopefully, with an expanding market to K-12 and early childhood programs, but from there, the sky's the limit with institutional markets. And increasing vulnerable children and families' access to good food in their communities. So Sharon Ostrowski, a farmer in St. Clair County at Sharkar Farms, is a Hoop Houses for Health farmer. Some of you may know her. She has also done some farm to school sales over the years and kind of had a mixed experience with that. Sharon also attended that joint network meeting in Flint back in July last year, and we made the connection at that meeting that Sharon might be a great supplier to Xavier. Sharon already had markets nearby where Xavier's located and visited family there, so doubly good. And Xavier and his team have some culinary skills and interest and some flexibility within their program to be able to use the diverse array of products, some of them very unique, that Sharon grows on a year-round basis. I just talked to them the other day and Sharon just offered some products that are available already here in March of this year. They met that day, began a farm to school relationship that continues and Sharon already, I believe, worked up to the amount to repay half of her loan by providing products to Xavier's program. So now Xavier and his team are purchasing products from Sharon and hopefully continuing that relationship well beyond any financial assistance. So these are the kinds of connections that are built on trust, that are built on kind of that desire to improve our communities and provide good food to our kids that we hope will last well beyond the financial assistance of our grant program or the financial assistance of Hoop Houses for Health. And Xavier and Sharon are actually going to speak with me and Drew Montre from the Farmers Market Association at the National Farm to Cafeteria Conference, which will be in Madison in June this year. And we're hosting, just so you know for your calendars, another joint meeting of the Michigan Farm to Institution Network and the Michigan Food Hub Network on Thursday, July 14th in Kalamazoo. So hopefully some additional lasting relationships will be developed there. So to close out my comments and turn it over to Megan, I wanted to end with a quote from one of our newly engaged early childhood programs that's connected with the Hoop Houses for Health Farmer. This is a very small early childhood program that's located in Mesick. Nicole Bailey from Little Feet Child Care Home said, my experience in working with the Hoop Houses for Health program is that I can feel proud of the healthy foods I provide for the children in my care and for the opportunity to teach the value of fresh, locally grown produce to children building lifelong habits and attitudes about nutrition. At the same time, I can feel proud of being able to help a local farmer grow her business and use her skills to produce even more locally grown and nutritious food, which strengthens our community. Adding the voucher fo program for families specifically empowers families of my students to make healthy food choices together. It is a winning cycle, and I'm so pleased to be a part of it. Thanks, Colleen. I am delighted to be here, and I'm also delighted to be one of the co-facilitators of the local food, Michigan Local Food Council Network. I do this job along with many partners, including Michigan Association of Planning, who is here, and Center for Regional Food System, and it's funded by a grant through the Kellogg Foundation. What happened is two years ago, Center for Regional Food Systems was looking to help the human infrastructure. And they brought these 16 councils together that are already established across the city of Michigan that you see on the slide above. They did a series of interviews, they met with them once, and then they met with them again to say, wow, should we really establish a network? And all the councils looked at the folks from Center for Regional Food Systems and said, we thought we did already. And that's the type of passionate people who want to move things forward that are involved in local food councils. For those of you who haven't had the pleasure of working with a local food council, it is a group that convenes to assess and recommend practices or policies in one or more sectors of the food systems in a certain geographic area. And that could be a city, like the Detroit Food Policy Council. It could be for a county, like the Macomb Food Collaborative. Or it could also be for a region, like the Upper Peninsula Food Exchange. These councils are as diverse as the people who are in them and the work that they do. Also, their origin stories are as varied as Marvel comic book characters. And what our job is, is to bring these groups together 
in a network. Because we are a network where groups share knowledge, find knowledge, and grow together. So our first job is to provide space for these local councils to come together. We do that by having in-person meetings. We have one coming up in April 26th in Holland, Michigan. It's hosted by Ottawa County Food Food Council, and anyone is welcome. But also, as you can see on the map, we have a geographic challenge. For those folks in Marquette, it's not easy to get to Ann Arbor or vice versa. So while we do have different places around the state where we meet and we are hosted by some of the, by our network members, we also host video conferences um, and webinars where people, again, we can share knowledge, but also in the upcoming months, what we were going to do, what we found is our members really need more time to chat and interact with each other. So we're looking to have open telephone calls and open video conferences. Another thing that we do is to connect uh, the councils to the ever-changing world of food information, policy, and programs on the local, state, and national level. We primarily do that through a listserv. Any one of you is welcome to join the listserv. Please find me or my email will be at the end of this presentation and we would gladly put you on. But honestly, one of the reasons that I was delighted to be asked to talk to you is our goal is in five years, when we all come back to talk about Healthy Food Connect has done and the successes and the work still to do, is hopefully that this map will have a lot more food councils in southeastern Michigan. And we can also talk about what those food councils have done here to help to not only um, move food policy forward and the Michigan Good Food Charter, but also to bring more healthy food to seniors and to children. In order to inspire you, I wanted to show and lift up some work of two of our members. The first is Detroit Food Policy Council. They are one of the oldest food councils here in the state of Michigan, and they started with the Detroit Black Community Food Security Network. I know that there's some members of that group are here in this room as well. Presented to Detroit City Council the need for a food security policy, and that included the formation of the Detroit Food Policy Council. It was then founded in 2009 by a unanimous vote of the Detroit City Council, and as anybody in southeastern Michigan knows, that doesn't happen very often. And they've continued on to do some great work, but part of that were not only their 21 members who come from 13 different sectors of the food systems, and they have four at-large members and one youth member and three city appointees, but it also comes from their larger membership of four committees, which is research and policy, education and engagement, fund development, and nom nominating. They are a robust council and supported by two full-time staff. Um, Winona, their executive director, is here in the room. But also, if you ever talk to anyone who is on their staff, they will say they cannot do it without their key partners. And those are really the folks who help them get an enormous amount of work done, um, including the passage of an urban agriculture ordinance. And really, um, my background is in urban planning, and I'm an urban planning consultant. The amount of community engagement and the way that the city, city Planning Commission worked with Detroit Food Policy Council in order to really talk to the community about what this ordinance should be was impressive. It took a lot of time, but it was worthwhile, and I feel like I know that it is a model for within the state and also has been looked at as a model nationally. They also, since 2011, have had an annual food conference, and to have a major conference for any organization, especially one that is volunteer-driven or even two full-time staff is a major endeavor, but these conferences are really where the community comes together and also the connections and relationships are made, such as the ones that Colleen talked about that are so important to this work. Finally, I wanted to show you one of the things that's latest on um, from the Detroit City Food Policy Council is the Detroit Food Finder. It's a prototype map that is online where anybody can go in, put in an address, and then find on the map where fresh food is near to them, be it in an urban garden, a corner store, or a grocery store. And, and they continue to do this sort of innovative work to foster the goals of their community. I also wanted to, though, share with you another corner of southeastern Michigan, which is Washtenaw County. Washtenaw County's Food Policy Council was founded in the winter of 2012, but the idea had come from a regional body that used to exist called the Food System Economic Partnership, which looked at all of for policy and economics and dealing with the food system throughout southeastern Michigan. Washtenaw County's Food Policy Council has a 23-point priority policy 
that was developed by the different policy action teams embedded with the community. And I'm gonna tell you the tale of one particular priority action team and why this map is there. So this map was done by an intern that came and worked with Washtenaw, the Washtenaw County Food Policy Council and the different priority action teams. And the Food Access and Nutrition Pat asked for this map, which showed the density of SNAP retailers, so retailers receiving the SNAP cards uh, for food assistance at a rate per 10,000 residents. The darker the color, the more density of those retailers. But with over 25,000 low-income residents in areas across Washtenaw County with low access to grocery stores, you can tell at a glance that what's available probably doesn't meet everybody's needs. However, what is there, again, is not that lived truth that comes through when you actually talk to people. So the planning action, the priority action team, one of their charges is to encourage municipal planning offices to consider food access and transportation decision making while encouraging transportation providers to provide coordinated and connected transportation to food access sites. Wow, that's a lot, right? So, but what that means in reality is Washington Area Transportation Study, which is in charge of non-motorized, looking at non-motorized and transit options throughout Washtenaw County, is updating their long-range plan. The PAT knows about it, and they knew when it was coming up, and they specifically reached out to Watts, talked to them, and brought that lived truth from the people who sit on their committee, including food, food access providers, including folks who do Meals to Wheels to seniors, and could say, these are what our clients need. And really what we do and now have helped the conversation go more towards extended grocery shuttles options instead of bus routes. Our charge at Center for Regional Food Systems and the Local Food Council Network is to help all of you do your jobs better and to improve your communities. Thank you so much for your time.